There are a lot of phones on the market, but only very few can change the industry and our lives. Can Motorola repeat the success of the iconic Razer? I'm SB from Tech Century, and let's find out with my full review of the Motorola Moto G. So welcome to my review of the Motorola Moto G. I'll divide this review in six different sections. We'll start out with the hardware and design of the Moto G. Then we'll talk about the cameras, the software, everyday performance, the battery life, and then the final conclusion. So first let's talk about hardware and design. And the moment that you take the Moto G out of the packaging, I was immediately very impressed. Not only is the whole design on the front very elegant and minimalistic, it basically looks like a Nexus phone, there isn't any Motorola branding or anything like that. And even on the back, the black cover looks great. Also a matte finish to it, so you have nice grip. Also, you can actually exchange the back cover. So for example, you can switch it to a red cover or to a blue one. And so you can customize the phone that way. Not quite as customizable as something like the Moto X, but still a very nice touch. In addition, we'll find a 720p screen, so a resolution of 1280 x 720 on 4.5 inches. And I have to say, the screen is excellent. Not only are the viewing angles great, also the brightness is excellent. And the color reproduction is also great, so I have absolutely no complaints. And just to put things in perspective, I'm usually using something like an LG G2 or also the Galaxy S4. And honestly, I didn't really notice any downgrade in terms of picture quality and also screen quality. So I'm very, very impressed with the screen that Motorola is using. And 4.5 inch just overall is a great size, especially also if you have on-screen buttons in Android. So let's actually talk about one of the most impressive features of the Moto G, and that's that it features a Snapdragon 400 quad-core processor that's clocked at 1.2 gigahertz. And I can already tell you the performance is excellent, and I really didn't have any issues whatsoever with any everyday performance. We also get one gigabyte of RAM, and also you can choose between eight gigabytes and 16 gigabytes of storage. Unfortunately, no expansion using a micro SD card slot, which is definitely a little drawback. So overall, in terms of hardware, I can say the Moto G feels great in the hand. The specs are impressive, especially if you consider the price, and I'm very happy with the phone. But now let's actually talk about the cameras. And on the back of the Moto G, we'll find a 5 megapixel camera with LED flash, as well as also a 1.3 megapixel camera on the front. And for photos, I have to say, while the quality is decent, I wasn't really that impressed with the picture quality overall. Also, the details are lacking somewhat, but that's explainable, especially with the 5 megapixel shooter. And also, if you're shooting pictures in 16x9, then you actually only have 3.8 megapixel. So that's also something that you have to consider. It's definitely workable, but still, especially if you're used to high-end devices, then the camera can definitely not compete with that. But overall, it's decent, and you see some test shots right here. But enough about the photo quality, also video quality is very important. So I actually recorded some clips with the rear facing camera as well as the front facing camera using the onboard microphone of the Moto G. So let's check that so out. So this is a quick demo of the front facing camera here on the Motorola Moto G. I probably didn't pick the best weather to try this out because it's actually raining and also quite windy. Not right now, but it was like three minutes ago. So uh, not the best choice, but anyways, you should get an idea on how good or bad this 1.3 megapixel camera on the front of the Moto G looks. Also, um, I noticed that especially indoors, uh, the white balance is just off a lot of times, not only with the front facing, but also with the rear facing camera. But uh, this will wrap it up at least for the front facing camera demo. So here's a demo. of the rear-facing camera on the Motorola Moto G. Also in 720p, this is a 5 megapixel shooter, uh, but it actually only records in 720p. Also, if you're taking photos in 16x9, you actually only get, I think, effectively 3.4 megapixels. But anyways, this definitely already looks a lot better than the front-facing camera. Not really a big surprise here, but still, I mean, in terms of cameras, I have to say I'm pretty disappointed. Also, the rear-facing camera for just for still photos isn't that great. But uh, especially for video, it should work out just fine. But overall, definitely the cameras aren't really the strong point of the Moto G. So, talking about the software, 
One of the big advantages of the Moto G is that it runs almost stock Android. Of course, that's also partly due to the fact that Motorola was purchased, or at least Motorola Mobility was purchased by Google. So it's now a Google company, but overall we just have the on-screen buttons and basically no customization from Motorola. Also, we don't really have too much added features as you would, for example, find on the Motorola Moto X, but still a very clean version of Android. It's running Android 4.3, but an update to 4.4 KitKat, at least in the US, is already rolling out. And it shouldn't take much longer until it's actually here in Germany. So yes, I'm very pleased with the software and it was great to just have such a stock-like experience on a phone that you can purchase unlocked for such a cheap price. So now let's actually talk about everyday performance. And to let you know, I used this phone for around 10 days as my daily driver. So I dropped my LG G2 and also my S4 for it. So this was the only phone that I was using and I have to say I'm absolutely blown away. I didn't think it was possible to produce such a great Android phone with a good processor, with a good screen for such a price and then sell it for 170 bucks. It's just absolutely insane. I'm completely blown away. Yes, you do notice that, for example, the Moto G only has one gig of RAM. So yes, apps crash more often than they, for example, do on an S4 or an LG G2. But overall, the performance is just great. Web browsing works without any issues. And I have to say, I'm not the biggest gamer anymore, especially on my phones. So I didn't really try too many games, but for every everyday task, this was an absolutely amazing phone that I can just highly recommend. Now, fast performance is always good, but what does it help you if the battery runs out at noon? So that was definitely one of my main concerns with the Moto G, especially since it only has a 2000 milliamp hour battery, which is fairly small, but I have to say, no issues whatsoever. Actually, this phone lasted longer than the S4 and so was very impressed. On any phone, I always install Battery Rigid Reborn just to keep track of my battery life. And so overall, the phone usually lasts 21 hours and 31 minutes after 10 days of usage. And usually the battery is fully charged in two hours and 52 minutes. So good values on both. I honestly didn't expect such good battery life, but this was one of the few phones that actually lasted all day for me. So I could just take it off the charger at like 6 a.m. in the morning and it would easily last till like 11 p.m. in the evening. So that was definitely a big, big surprise for me. And I'm very happy with the battery life on the Moto G. So now let's actually end this review with my final conclusion. And as you might already guess out of the points that I mentioned before, I'm very, very pleased with the Moto G. And honestly, I think this defines a new generation of budget Android smartphones that are great and not budget Android smartphones that suck or that are just okay, but Android smartphones on a budget that are great. And so this is why I think this is one of the most noteworthy and also most important smartphones of 2013. I've owned a lot of phones in 2013, being the HTC One, being the Galaxy S4, the AG G2, the Note 3. And if I'm gonna look back in two or three years at 2013, think about phones, the Moto G is what will stay in my memory. And this for me really redefines how good a budget Android phone can be. And that a budget Android phone can't just be crappy, it can't just be good, can be very good and excellent. So if you're thinking about buying a Moto G or if you just have a budget of around 200 bucks for an unlocked phone, don't think twice, pick up a Moto G. I'm sure you won't regret it. So thank you very much for watching this video. I'm SB from Tech Century. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to leave a like as well as subscribe to the channel for many more videos to come. I'm really interested in what you have to say about the Moto G in the comment section down below and my review Thank you very much. Also make sure to check out my Facebook page at facebook.com slash techcenturyofficial. See you next time.